Right, we have here behind us in the future HMS Queen Elizabeth. It's quite a significant statement of the regeneration of UK carrier strike capability. It's been four decades since the UK has been able to float a ship like this and in future to operate it in the terms of national interests. Um, while the program is still a long way from completion in terms of having a carrier capability at sea by the end of 2020, the program in terms of the build of the two ships and the regeneration of the aircraft and the crews to support uh, the, the operation of the aircraft is now coming together at a very, very rapid pace indeed. So today represents quite a significant milestone in that process in that we had the first complete ship ready to be named and very shortly ready to go in the water. In due course, it'll be going through sea trials uh, before first and class trials uh, with the aircraft towards the back end of 2018. One of the inter most interesting things about this uh, development, of course, is the fact that you have a very, very large deck capability with the carrier that will not only enable the UK to um, deliver a significant capability through its aircraft and its helicopters and other access, but also to enable other international partners to be able to join in that process. The UK has been working very closely with the French and the Americans, particularly at the moment to regenerate the skills in the air crew uh, required for the pilots that will fly the F-35B Stovall Lightning II aircraft off these carriers in due course. But in the longer term it raises the possibility of whether key nations and navies like uh, the US Navy uh, and its US Marine Corps will want to use the carriers as an extra platform uh, to embark their own assets, such as uh, the US Marine Corps' own 35Bs or even the, um, the MB-22 uh, Osprey uh, rotary wing uh, helicopters.